lot today. Uh, I want to know how to make some money doing this. Uh, um, before we get to that, um, why don't we uh, talk about how we're going to take some of the sites that you folks are producing, the hyper-local sites, and uh, provide new forms of uh, storytelling there, moving beyond text. A lot of the hyper-local sites that are out there currently start off with text is the easiest way to start off. Uh, but at some point, if we do want to raise the level of engagement, uh, the level of conversation, we need to start presenting uh, our stories, our uh, information in compelling ways that draws people in and gets people talking as well. Uh, I will start off just pointing out some of the tools that I'm using on my site. It's, uh, it's a site called Family Life Behind Bars and it's not a hyper local site necessarily but it's a niche interest site. Uh, it received a grant from JLab and the Knight Foundation for, um, uh, for the New Voices grant. It uh, looks at the impact of incarceration on the family members of people who are incarcerated. And one of the things I've been doing, this group is very hard to engage with in a sense because they're stigmatized, they're worried that they're going to lose their jobs if people find out that either they've been to prison or they know that one of their family members has been in prison. I've been working with different ways to try to engage with them. Uh, and I'll show you some of the tools I'm using. Uh, one, of the, one of the best tools, one of my favorite tools right now to use, and the examples that I'm going to give you are a lot, of, a lot of tools that are for free free or at a very low cost because as we said when we're starting up some of these hyper local sites we want to minimize the the expenses uh, so uh, this one of the tools that I'm using is called block talk radio any of you using that right now apart from my students uh, okay um, it's a I'll, I'll go to it right now Okay, it's, it's a site that offers you, it allows you to become a talk show host, basically. And this is a, I try to have a program every two weeks. It's a way to get an audience to keep coming back every two weeks to discuss a particular topic. So the topic, the show that we're having tonight is uh, the job search after incarceration. A lot of you have applied for jobs and when you have to, if you get the job or when you're applying, it'll ask you to fill out a little form. Have you ever been arrested? Uh, uh, have you ever served time as a felon? Those things. What are the answers? How do you answer those questions? So this allows you to set up, uh, it gives you a phone number, okay? It's a, it's a local phone number that you dial into to become a host. You're given, uh, you have the ability to call in guests and your audience can actually call into a phone number and listen to it over the phone, the radio show over the phone, or they can watch it, uh, listen to it live on the internet. If they have a question, when we're talking about engagement, when they have a question, they can press one on their phone dial and this little hand goes up on your switchboard, on your computer. When that little hand goes up, you can patch them in and say, okay, what's your question or what's your response to what our guest just said? And it, it creates engagement, it creates a, um, uh, a, a reason for the audience to keep coming back. It's a free tool and there are different levels for it. You can also pay to get extra services like all other uh, web tools that are out there. You can get the free version and then some extra services as well. Um, I'll share a few more with you, but I'm going to um, let Michael introduce himself. I, you know what? I didn't introduce myself, actually. I'm Sandeep Janarkar, and I'm uh, one of the uh, associate faculty members here in Interactive. I work with Jeff Jarvis. Great. Oh, I, I think I can use okay. that one. Um, I'm Michael Rosenblum. Uh, I do a bunch of stuff. Um, I build TV stations on this hyper-local model using very small things. I convert TV stations. Um, I run training courses. And occasionally I even teach a course here at uh, CUNY every once in a while. Um.
Oh, you want me to talk? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 um, the, the thing we're talking about here is beyond text, right? That's the concept, and it's all kinds of other tools. But uh, I think the most interesting part of the issue here is revenue. Because that, after all, is the, the whole base of this whole thing is supposed to be new business, new business yeah. models, right? Okay? And so a lot of the discussion here is not revenue-based. And the bottom line, in my experience and most people's experience, is if you don't generate income, you're out of business. No matter how good your idea is, no matter how terrific your journalism, no matter how fantastic your reporting is, no matter how hyper-local, even if you raise money in an initial round, if you have some foundation underwriting you, if you don't raise money, if you don't make a viable business, you are fundamentally dead. And so I, what I want to discuss in the time that we have here, I think the most productive thing I can discuss, my business is mostly video. And video is a very powerful opportunity to make enormous amounts of money if you understand how the business works. And putting up a bunch of vlogs and video is not going to raise you any money. And neither is doing some hyper-local video thing where you put the videos online and you make a, nobody cares. And nobody's going to go there and you're not going to make any money. That having been said, there are ways to make small amounts of money and enormous amounts of money if you can wrap your head around video. Video is very easy to produce. Any idiot can make video. The technology is off the shelf. Any nine-year-old can, can produce stuff. So that question is done. And very much in the web world, we've all pretty much conquered the notion of really cheap content. We all know how to make really, really, I mean, except for a couple of people at the New York Times or Wall Street Journal, we all understand how to make really cheap, that, that's finished. And we all know how to make really good content. The problem now is profitability. And we haven't paid any attention because we're journalists and we run away from business and we go, it's for the business guys, don't mess with me. We haven't paid any attention to profitability. And this is an enormous mistake. So there's two things I think that I can offer to you which I think are beneficial, at least worth your time for showing up. Um, one is in a macro sense. Um, one, of the, one of the companies I own has a partnership with Verizon. Many years ago I built New York One, which you may be familiar with. And that was the first of these VJ driven models, blah, blah, blah. And so a couple of years ago, I went to Verizon when they started this Fios network, and I said, let me build little New York ones in conjunction with Fios, and we'll roll them out with you as we go. And so they kind of dug it. Now, the technology has, has radicalized so much. When we built New York One, I don't think I'm telling anything out of school now, the cost of operation for New York One in 1990 when we were launched was $10 million a year, which was pretty cheap for TV in those days, because WABC is running about $85 million a year. Um, we, the, the stations that I built, I, ha, I own three little tiny hyper-local TV stations in partnership with Verizon. One in New York, one in New Jersey, and one in uh, D.C. And the one in D.C. has been running for three years, so we know the model works. The, I don't have a business, I don't have, I don't have a building, I don't have a newsroom, I don't have editors, I don't have producers, I don't have a staff, I don't have carpeting, I don't have anything. All my journalists have laptops and cameras. They all work from their own homes. They go out and report the stories they want to report. They upload it to a server. We suck the stuff out of the server. I have an office on, on 54th and, and, par, uh, and Park. We stuck the stuff out of the server. We assemble the thing there. We ship it back to Verizon. That's how we make TV shows. My total cost for operation for running this hyper-local TV operation is about $600,000 a year, all in. Which means, yeah, it's pretty cheap, right? For a year of TV, I would say so. It's, it's original half hours every day. Yeah. All ten? Huh? All ten or one? No, no, all, each one, each station. But each station does a half hour original every day. So it's pretty cheap for TV. It makes the break even point for the commercial spots about $4 a spot. So everything over $4 a spot becomes profitability. So therefore, suddenly, television, which is going in the toilet for the most part, this whole hyper local model for creating television becomes very profitable. But in order to make it profitable, you have to gut the production model. You have to make the production model commensurate with what the technology do, and you have to be ruthless. You have to be absolutely ruthless. Now, we come to the other issue of how do you raise money out of this, and that becomes the big problem. So this guy here from Brooklyn Public Television, just, who are you? Sorry, he came up to me. What's your name? Greg, he runs public television stations in Brooklyn, right? Is that public access stations? Okay, so here's another model for you, because I'm going to solve your problem right now for free, even though I normally charge a lot for consulting. But because we're here, I'm going to do a magic trick in front of you. Okay, ready? Okay. I have another business called... Um, 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 Travel Channel Academy. Can you pop up TravelChannelAcademy.com? This is a partnership I started with the Travel Channel about uh, three years ago. Um, I founded Current TV with Al Gore, who may have made a good vice president, but he is one crap businessman. If you didn't read the paper, if you tech times today, they're going broke, which unfortunately I have an equity position in Current TV, so this personally upsets me. But um, the reason was that they built this big, complicated thing with studios and buildings and a giant, and they're, they're idiots, those guys. Um, the, the model from Current showed us that there was an enormous appetite among the general public to create content, which probably is a driver for you. 
But the big problem we had with current was that the vast majority of what people send it to current is absolute unmitigated garbage. Not to mention the rights issues, the music hearings, the releases and the clearances. So about three years ago, when Travel Channel was taken over by a guy named Pat Young, who came from the BBC, I went to Pat and I said, let's try something else. Let's set up an academy where we can train people who want to make the content for the channel. And so we've been running this sucker for um, uh, three years now. We charge people $2,000 for a four-day intensive seminar. In fact, we're going to run one here tomorrow. We rent space from these guys. We're going to run one here starting tomorrow. We do 24 of these a year in New York, um, D.C., and uh, Santa Barbara. And they are always booked to capacity. So that's a revenue stream to begin with. We put them through a very intensive four, and then they get certified to become a contributor. And only the certified can contribute to the channel. The channel buys content from about $250 a minute, which is dirt cheap as far as the content side is concerned, but it all pays for itself. This model has worked so well, we had a non-compete for two years. We're now signing deals with The Guardian, uh, a Weather Channel, and WeTV so far, but we're in discussion with other channels. It's obviously a scalable business because it makes the content for nothing and it provides a revenue stream. And we found that by charging the people for the training and only allowing them in after they've taken it, we created a barrier to access, so only the people who are really, really interested in doing this were doing it. So if, and, and what the channels contribute is just ad spots. We provide a complete turnkey operation. So Travel Channel gives us 13, 30-second spots a day to advertise the thing, and that's all we really want from them. So for you, you got, you got stuff to fill up in Brooklyn, but you also have a platform in which to do this thing, and you have a community that I know, because a lot of the Brooklyn filmmakers, they work for me, as, you know, for cheap labor. But essentially, you have a very vibrant filmmaking community in your territory there, and you have a lot of money sitting there in Park Slope and all that kind of stuff. If I were you, I would marry these two things together, and I'm very happy to set up for you, you know, Brooklyn Public Access Community Television Academy. But you have to train people. You have to make it worth their while. You have to attach a value to this. If you sit there and go, oh, free, 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 well, that's fine. So we all understand the web wants to be free in terms of content, but you know what? The web does not want to be free in terms of those who are allowed to participate. There's a very interesting idea. is to set a barrier to participation and make them people pay for the privilege of putting your stuff on the air because you have limited shelf space. We find that this can provide a couple of million dollars in revenue to start with, and it provides very good content because now suddenly everyone is trained and there's a competitive edge to who gets to do the stuff and who doesn't. Current, you may have read today in Tech Times, is actually going to go to long-form programming, which I would suggest, you know, I told the idiots that three years ago to do this, but I would suggest doing that right away, and that's a good model for you. If you can do that, then you create content that becomes translatable beyond your sort of laboratory for creation. I've sold about 400 hours to cable, and cable on average pays anywhere from $150,000 to $250,000 per hour. But they're looking for very, like Brooklyn South, you know, Danny Elias, who did Brooklyn South and the Cops, that he went on to do Dog the Bounty Hunter, right? Danny used to work for me. So there's no reason that your people properly directed, and the key is properly directed, couldn't take what they're doing on your channels and website. You find a couple of them, you make a, a company with them, essentially, you make a partnership with them, leverage off them, train them, get them up and running, use your site as a pilot, and then take that stuff out and schlep it to cable, which has a limitless appetite for stuff that's really good, really compelling, gritty, which I think your guys can do, and below the price point. So now we've created for you a business model that creates you initial cash flow, positive cash flow to begin with, trains your people, gives you a cadre, and gives you a payoff at the top end, which, which motivates both you and motivates the people who are signing up for the thing. You like that model? Good. We'll talk later. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. How would you bring in a, uh, a video component to try to enhance a, uh, a site that already has good content and good reach? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think video is essential first in any website. There's an article that went out in USA Today, which is very interesting, which says um, Jupiter Research says all small businesses will have to have video because everybody's going to video. The average American, Nielsen reported yesterday, the average American uh, soberingly watches 8.4 hours of television a day. I mean, we are a fucking idiot country, but that's just how we are. And, and as, as, as the you know, 4G comes to phones, it's going to be nothing but video on cell phones all day long. So if you have content, and you, you do have content that you think is high quality, it's not an option to do video. You must do video if you expect to survive. Fortunately, the ability to shoot with small digital cameras, to cut on Final Cut Pro, to upload to sites like WordPress, you know, is so 
video viable, the stuff, it just eats it like that. It's very, very, very simple for you to do a conversion of your site to some video component. For, oh, it's no cost. I mean, it's, very, it's free for all practical purposes. And what you will do, therefore, is then have another way to uh, attract advertisers. Yes. You mentioned, like, cable, you mentioned Verizon. Yes. Um, you know, cable, to me, is a different animal as a potential revenue uh, source. It's, it's a higher end, but the potential is there. Cable, let's talk about cable just for a second. Um, in the early days of television, in the 1970s, when I was but a young boy, um, there were three channels in the United States, three networks. Those networks had a total appetite for 64,000 hours of programming a year. I Love Lucy, My Mother the Car, all that crap. In the 500 channel cable environment, in which we all inhabit today to some extent, the appetite for content, the need for content, you must have content on cable. You can't have a channel and run nothing. The appetite is 4.5 million hours of programming a year. That is a big number. And of course, that number is only going to continue to go north as you get greater and greater capacity to drive stuff out. So cable channels need content. And they need content at a reasonable price point. Because the more channels you get, the more you fractionalize the viewer base. The more you fractionalize the viewer base, the lower your ad spots, your CPMs go. But they still have to have it. So if you can create within your little shop a viable sort of production entity that can make animals that feed the cable need at a reasonable price point and of high enough quality, you have a secondary income stream. I don't know what kind of business you're in, but let's say you have something to do with animals. I have no idea what it is. You know, pet, pets. Dot, you know, Brooklyn.com. If you can create some stupid show that you can schlep to Animal Planet and sell them at fifty thousand dollars a half hour, which is a bargain for them, uh, they'll buy it, assuming the quality is perfect. And the fact is, the technology, little handheld cameras, this point and shoot, and Final Cut Pro that a nine-year-old can operate gives you the potential to do that. So there's varying degrees of streams of income. All of your income does not have to go from ads on pre-rolls on your website. This is a misnomer. You, what you've created here is a machine to make content. You can sell that content anywhere in the world. It doesn't just have to be on your site. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, business model that you talked about side. <laughs> Um, you know, with, with the professional part of what we do at uh, Cable Access or, uh, Station, I, I literally have thousands and thousands of hours of professionally produced, hyper-local content. I've right. been doing it for years. Yeah. This is what Public Access has done and what I've actually done with the Brooklyn Station. Right. Is there a market for that? I'm, no. Okay. No, it, it feels as if there's a marriage for what's there with, with online journals. No, but what you have with all those people, all those talented people that you have, you have the potential to shape them into something that there is a market for. And if you want to know what the market for cable is, you have a machine in your living room that tells you what cable is buying 24 hours a day. Look at the goddamn food network, right? Now, you can't tell me that some of the people that you work with couldn't produce, you know, Brooklyn cooking, right? You could. I'm sure you could. That is where the market is. Hyperlocal news stories, and nobody cares, and they're dead in two seconds. The trick to cable is it's simple, it's understandable, it's compelling, and it has legs. You can air 10 years from now. But I'm sure buried in your enormous network of people, there's the potential to create tons and tons of this stuff at a reasonable price point. Sorry, man, I don't mean to dominate the thing. Actually, my question is for Sandeep, so this would help. Oh, good. Um, thinking about this model of kind of um, semi-user generated content, maybe we can call it. Um, is it applicable for a prison families type community or a community that maybe doesn't have two thousand dollars for a session? Yeah. Well, yeah, that that was one of the issues that I was thinking of as well in terms of the training. Yes, well, for some, New York Video School. What's that? New York Video School. It's online training for only nine dollars and ninety-five cents a month. Okay. <laughs> Very easy to sign up for your credit card. Very hard to get off. But. What about what about the tools and so forth? Just the tools. You know, the you tools can, for video? Yeah, even even you know like the flip videos. They're oh, at least two hundred dollars. Flips. Yeah, the problem with flip cams is that the audio sucks. And uh, it, you know the the weird thing about video is people will tolerate bad video. They will not tolerate bad audio. So until flip cam comes up with a mini plug jack. Or are you just getting close? Yeah, well, it, 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 it close only works in hand grenades and, and horseshoes, you know, it doesn't work in video. That's, you have to hit it or you don't. So um, I would stay away from the flip cam now if you expect somebody to look at what you're doing. 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, for about 800 bucks, you can get yourself like the, the Sony uh, HR40, I guess, is the 50 now, or the, um, no, that's Canon, uh, Sony 9, uh, HMC 9. They're nice cameras, um, they're not bad. And, and Final Cut Pro or Final Cut you know, Express, Final Cut Express is about 300 bucks if you're a student, fantastically powerful software. Yeah, I think, though, still, one of the issues that comes up is we were talking about it earlier today, just the redlining of different communities. And I think you probably have something in your mission that it's not for just people who are able to pay to go through training and then supply you with different shows. Well, no, no, well, we do. I mean, we teach 16 different courses, uh, media courses, to anybody in Brooklyn, regardless of your ability to get. Right. Um, that, that, that is what our mission is. So, um, I'm in this business model as a, as a separate entity that I have to but I would also I, I would also say I, I don't mind undercutting my business it doesn't bother me. But um, the fact is that when we charge people two thousand dollars for the four, which you may think is an ungodly amount of money for a four day course, I wouldn't disagree. But they seem to want to pay. It creates a barrier in which you only get people who are really dedicated and interested in doing this who participate. Because the big problem afterwards is you have to manage these people. They come away with a certain expectation. And the last, the last thing I want is 10,000 people who got this for free, who kind of do it on a whim, who send in some crap videos, who then expect and, and are entitled to some kind of a response. I would rather limit the, the pool and deal with people who really, really, really have something at risk so they have a, an interest in creating really good stuff and, and want to earn their money back. Yeah. I would just add to that, but I think food would be a great opportunity for that because there are so many different views that I think would pay to learn to produce that content and that then you can turn and sell that. So maybe it would come making this like a little specialized niche model for saleable ideas. I don't know. Well, it's a little bit of apples and oranges because I do part of the utility public access television is that facilitated the community voice and giving people a free speech platform. Well, I understand that. So there's that. And then there's the professional aspect of what we do, which is really what you're specifically talking about. So it works well. But but I ask your opinion on, on IP to television, um, because we're, we're doing a hyper-local thing in Connecticut. We're actually doing pretty well. Not, not groundbreaking numbers just yet, but, but we've had about 40,000 hyper-local video plays in the last four or five months for a very limited size community. My, I'm convinced that the problem with web video now, we do like two-minute packages, is that it's not very comfortable to watch web video right now. You have to sit in your chair your, on your laptop. You know, my MacBook is like a react, nuclear reactor sometimes. Uh, where do you see that going? I mean, we have, you're on Apple TV, nobody really has one. Um, I see the, I have, I've got one too. I, 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 I watch my own stuff on it. But, um, but uh, you know, where do you see that going? Because I know Sony has a TV now with, with an Ethernet and a Wi Fi on it. You know, I, I think really when, when you can come home, turn on the television, and says, hey, here's all your content, I, you know, it's really, I think it's going to really take off. I'm not sure. I think, I think you're going to see a marriage of uh, Internet and television in that company is where you won't be able to tell the difference. Right. You'll be able to access, like, you know, when first cable first came out, Everybody thought, oh, nobody's going to go away from NBC because they're number four. Who in their right mind is going to go to 64 to watch, you know, uh, in fact, I don't want six to watch BBC. It doesn't matter because it's an abstraction. And those channels, the internet will marry into those channels. But content, I think, for broadcast television is inherently a different animal than content for the web. In the web, you're on a little screen. People have really a short attention spans. And it's almost a one-to-one -one experience. When you watch television, oh, I'm sure you've got a big plasma monitor, you do not want to see what you want to see on YouTube. So again, to go back to the thing that you do, I think if you look at the great driver here is the appetite of cable channels for content. And they have money. These guys have real money. And they need content. So you have an asset that you've built here. This you, have a, you have a factory to manufacture content, video content. So I think you have to bifurcate and say, well, this is the stuff we're doing for the website. But you know what? We're going to take a shot at doing three pilots for True TV or HGTV or whatever you know turns you on, and send them, make just make three minutes. But you, they like people like you because you don't have to do it already. You're in place. You talked about uh, approaching my cable networks with your video content. Yeah. What's that conversation like for someone who's kind of outside the industry? Like, all right, here's, here's the deal. Um, uh, nobody, cable channels are not interested in your idea. Don't pitch them on your idea. Your idea sucks. Your idea is great. Nobody cares. They, watch they've seen it a million times already. Um, they're not really, they don't know who you are. So what you have to do is you have to make yourself the most kick-ass 
two minute video you ever saw in your life. I mean really kick ass. The kind of thing where you're going to show it to some executive and they're going to look and they go, holy shit, and run down the hall and get Bob and go, you got to see this thing. The thing is going to crank, 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 crank. I'll tell you a funny story. I ran, a, I run these courses like every week and there was a guy who sat in my course, he came to one of these training things, they paid 2,000 bucks. And he was scary because he had like this completely shaved bald head. He was this big man. He was wearing a DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency shirt, you know, like sunglasses. So right away, you know, I went to flush the toilet three times because it's just instinctive. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was, he was a former state trooper from South Carolina, right? And the first thing he said to me, he said, you a Jew? So, <laughs> so but the guy, he, he, was a state, he was a state trooper who used to run dogs. And um, he, he got in his own business five years ago and he set up this thing called Canine Corps. And he rents the dogs out to like different local law enforcement for drug searches and shit like that. And I thought, there is a TV show here. Somewhere there's a TV show. So I said, when we, I said, we finished, Jay, go back to South Carolina and go. And um, go take the video camera and make me three kick-ass minutes, right? Just like we talked about. So he sent me a tape and I sent it back and went back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And finally, in the end, after about six months of recutting, we had time, I signed another break, but we had something just rocked, you know? It was just like unbelievable. And so I started schlepping it around. I got meetings in Animal Planet and all this, because they just looked at the tape and they went, okay. I sold, I just signed a deal to sell, we're going to series with True TV, it's called Southern Fried Justice. It's going to start airing in the spring. You'll see it, man. This guy was nothing. He was a nobody. He was some stupid state trooper from South Carolina. And now he's going to be like, have his own TV show that we're, you know, he's going to produce in conjunction with it. So that's how you got to break out. It's got to be something that, and from the first second, it's got to just like jump off the screen and grab somebody by the throat. So like with the part you talking about, you said I had to be that uh, True TV. Who'd you talk to? Who were you talking to? Well, who'd you talk to at True TV? Well, I, I'm, I'm not in the... Oh, here's how you get the media. I don't know how to get a media. So here's what you Yeah, I'm just... I'm just... If here, the first thing you have to do is you have to focus on the cable channel that you watch, because you're going to live with this thing for a long time. So, TiVo. And when you get to the credits at the end, there are two sets of credits. One is for the production company that made the thing. You don't want to go near them, because it's going to steal your shit. <laughs> but the other one is, it'll say for True TV, for HGTV. And it'll say the producer. That's the guy you want to write to. So the next thing you do is you Google that person, and they all sit in like windows and cubicles and they have terrible lives. And so the first you Google that, you find out what they did with their past, and you write them a letter. You go, Dear Tom, I love watching Dewey Beach. I think you've done a genius job here, and it's almost as good as you did when you work at HGTV. You can paint my apartment. Uh, I have this fantastic thing. And make friends with the guy, you know what I mean? Because very few people write to him anyway, and he's treated like shit his whole life. Okay? So then when you when you're, when you're, when you upload the thing somewhere, and when the, when, it, when the URL comes in, he's going to click on it. Now that's your moment. You have one second to get that guy's attention. These people make their career by finding the next star. That's, that's, that's their stock and trade. So if you have something that just jumps off the screen, everybody goes, holy shit, i got to have that, you're home free. Get it? Yeah, <coughs> When you get uh, when you get a sense that Southern Fried Justice guy could be something, yes, right. At what point do you let this character in that you think there's money to be made? In other words, oh, that, from the beginning, I'm not lying. Moment yeah. one, I mean, why are else he doing that? I go, Jay, we're going to be million. I'm going to be a millionaire, and you're going to get five hundred dollars every show. That's really <laughs> <laughs> Did you sign the deal? Yeah, he signed the deal. Okay, you must lawyer this up and down the street. Because if this sucker really takes off, this guy could be the next dog, the bounty hunter, and I don't want to get fucked, right? So everything in paper. Uh, quick question. Uh, a lot of these sites that people are talking about are fairly recent places. They don't have the same context. You described one way of yeah. tapping into someone. Um, are there other strat strategies that you would recommend, especially when you may not be able to create that kick-ass video that you're talking about. You and, and maybe just taking one of these online tutorials is not going to... Oh, hit by course. No, definitely. <laughs> if you can't create the kick-ass video, you're done. Don't even bother. You're wasting your time. Because you're going to have to create a kick-ass show. But the fact is that you have to bear in mind that the, the cable channel needs you. The person who's sitting in the cubicle making $85,000 a year, they need you. They are hungry. They, you have to feed them. And that's what you have to offer them. Essentially, you go to them and go, I'm going to solve your problem. Whether you can or not is, is an unknown. But they are looking for you. It's like when you go raise money. You know, the first time I raised money for a company, I couldn't believe how easy it was. Because I didn't understand there's more money chasing ideas than there are ideas chasing money. And it's the same thing with this. There's more need for content chasing content than there's content chasing need. I'll give you a perfect example. 
we got a whole building full of content makers here, right? And they're all really smart, they're already digging, they're all doing stuff. How many of them have gone and shrunk their concepts to cable? Zero? Zero. Because they don't know they can do it. They don't understand the appetite is there, but believe me, it is. And when you say they're looking for you, these people, they, they're looking for you, do, are you talking also perhaps uh, of using social media tools as well yeah, for them to... Uh, yeah, to yeah. I understand I'm all supposed to say that. But... You don't think so, how come? Because they don't care. They don't care, you tweet, they have to know what the fuck tweeting is. <laughs> You know, they're going to make a TV show. So how do they look for you? I mean, you have to find them. No, you must find So it's the other way around. You have to find yes, them. You have to they're not looking for you. They're, they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. And they do not... It's like they said, you know, the most thing. They said Rupert Murdoch went out of Google for the first time last year. You think, yes, so there's a guy who runs a huge news corp. Gigantic movie studios. He didn't even know what Google is. So you can't sit here going, well, I'll put my video on YouTube and it'll get discovered. I'll get a contract. Bullshit! The people who make the decisions, they're not in this world. They don't live here. They live in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what about before you sort of get to the whole lawyerly stage when you're yeah. just sending an idea? Your don't send ideas. Or your two minute video, yes, which right. does yeah. contain an idea. Yes. Um, is there any way of protecting no, that? No, don't bother. Don't bother. Because what, what, if you're going to sue Discovery, they got like buildings full of lawyers. Forget it. They've been for years. So you just no base, that's why you have to make it so amazing. There's no, you know, people say, how do I copyright? How do I, you don't protect. You don't copyright. But the thing is that, that it, everybody, there's, there's like five ideas in the world. You know, I'm going to put cameras in a college dormitory. Big deal. But the fact <laughs> is, if you can deliver something that they go, cool, I want that, they're coming directly to you. They're not going to some little production company in LA that does the same crap you see all the time. Um, actually, this video stuff's been really intriguing, but I'd like to ask of, of both of you, what other bells and whistles beyond video and beyond the, 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 the blogging, uh, the talk radio stuff, what other kinds of non things <coughs> might you uh, suggest as having possibilities? From, from both a journalism and a monetary perspective. Yeah, sure. I mean, in terms of uh, some of the things that uh, I find valuable uh, are, and, and they're definitely not as exciting as video, but I think they get information across. Uh, you've got, uh, you have the ability to map video to, or not just video, but information, actually map it. Um, there was, uh, there's the see, click, fix kind of um, tool that you could use, not just for potholes, that's what they were referring to earlier, but I think I'm pretty excited about using it nationally for other types of um, uh, problems. Uh, were you at the see, click, fix yeah. session? It's just a, a, a widget that you can put on, and as people discover problems in their communities, they can click on it, describe the problem, and it gets sent around the community to different people uh, in government, local government, etc., until it gets fixed. Who, who's hopefully, the, on that? Uh, it, the company's called ClickCFix.com. So that's a lot of the examples they were showing. Just showed a lot of potholes and things like that. But I think that there's huge use outside of that uh, in terms of actual local issues that could come up that you want to uh, not just have it by uh, by a particular uh, pothole, but actually a, a, an issue that's important to you. And people can raise those issues within a community, and people get to vote on it. Again, it's trying to raise the level of engagement within your community. Um, something else that I uh, use, uh, especially if um, you want to uh, tell a story journalistically, free tools again. There's uh, uh, Vuvox. That's something that allows you to, to actually create blending in video with photos. Uh, it's more, it presents more of a media store model, which I don't know what you think of that. Very nice guy. Yeah. Very nice guy. Very nice Very quality video. A lot of Emmy award winning videos. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's lovely, and, and the site is magnificent, and the videos are fantastic, but he makes his money doing, you know, building sites for other people. There's no connection between his videos and revenue. It's a way to get those, the, the, the I mean, business. I think he uses it. I think he, he loves it. He has a passion for it, but it's not a business. 
Uh, well, anyway, you can tell the stories that way as well on your site. Uh, check it out, Vuvox. It's very simple. These are all very simple to use tools incorporating video, photos. Uh, timelines, I think, are important, especially for hyper-local issues. If, if it's down to uh, developments within a community on how things have been voted or some building project, you can set up a timeline very easy that incorporates photos into the timeline itself, incorporates videos. You can show uh, the construction of a, of, a, of, a, of a road or whatever it is uh, using this particular tool. So those are some of the ones that I wind up using that I've found pretty useful. Yeah, let, me, let me make one more point before I don't know, we'll finish that. Um, I think that on the, as I said on the content side, I think we've wrapped our head around this very clearly. I think we have not paid attention to the revenue side. And a lot of it, you see a whole room full of business here where nobody has an income. And even though this stuff is very nice, they're all going to be out of business in six months. So here's what I think we have to do. I think we have to pay as much attention to the revenue side as we pay to the content side. And not only do we have to pay attention to it, I think we have to create a model for the revenue side that matches the content side. The content side, we all get the citizen journalist model. We all understand people contribute nothing. The, content, the revenue side, we're still going, well, we'll hire a head of ad sales and health side, which is bullshit. So fortunately for you, I'm just funding a new company called iAdvertise, not us, which you can all invest in. And essentially what this does is, this creates citizen ad sales people. In other words, it creates thousands and thousands of people like Avon ladies who run around, they do nothing but they sell commercials. That's all they do, or sell spots, or sell spots on your stuff. And you get 25% get for every ad they sell. So in Brooklyn, we could, and we can talk about this also, we could empower a thousand people as ad sales people based on 25% commission. They go to every deli, and every shoe store, and every you know, place there is, and for $50 or $100, because the break even is so tiny on this thing, you're not going to get a vice president of ad sales for your company to go out and go to the shoe store for a $50 spot. But you will get a thousand housewives and students and unemployed people and retirees running around Brooklyn doing it. So this, I think, is the model that solves the revenue side. Not that we're supposed to talk about. If you want to invest in this, please let me know. We're doing offerings. Yes. Any other questions? <laughs>